six months time. It's the elections to the European Parliament. So between now and then we've asked Max Cotton to go and meet some of its most prominent members. They'll all be after your vote in June after all. But what do they do all day? Well, his first date is with the leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage. Meet a square peg in a round hole. We only want what's best for him. This is Nigel Farage, the leader of the UK Independence Party and a member of the European Parliament. His job, being an MEP, must be a bit like being in a gang of mods, when actually you're a rocker. Nigel, Nigel. Today is a big day in Strasbourg. The European Parliament is celebrating the 10th anniversary of the single currency. The guest speaker is the former French president, Valérie Giscard d'Estaing. Nigel has promised to misbehave. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do enjoy the 10th birthday of the euro because I very much doubt you'll be celebrating the 20th. What you've done with this euro is you have trapped people in an economic prison. You've trapped people in a Volkerkerker from which to get out, from which to get out. You can boo, you can jeer. They hate you, is that right? Some they of them do. do. Yeah, really? I, I think there's a real the, feeling of kind since of... The, since since the Lisbon Treaty, country. they do, yeah. yeah. And, and they were, people were booing and yeah, jeering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. normal. That's okay. normal. Yeah, I mean, if I don't get that, I'm very... If I don't get that, I've obviously got it wrong. Really? So, uh, yeah. 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 And, um... Yeah. You've got to be thick-skinned then to be a UKIP um, member of the European well, Parliament. I think you've got to have a you've sense got to of not humor. care. You've got to have a sense of humor. No, I think you've got to care. I think you've got to care passionately. I mean, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do it if I didn't it's care. A little passionately. bit schoolboy. A little bit kind of. I'm having. I'm mucking about well, here. I'm well, a bad boy. Bad boy well, in the back of the I'm class. I'm not going to apologise uh, for having a bit of fun whilst we do it. You know, I'm not Today's fun meant that Nigel had planned to disrupt the ceremonial singing of the European national anthem. They were going to drown everyone out by singing the Marseillaise. I came all the way to Strasbourg because I was promised that when the rest of the MEPs were singing Ode to Joy and the hymnal version of that, you were going to sing the Marseillaise. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> like Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. And I was disappointed because it didn't happen. Well, I was disappointed. I was waiting for um, it and it didn't happen. I've been furiously handing out song sheets all morning to people so that when they played the anthem, we'd get up and sing the Marseillaise. And I was surprised, actually. The take-up was very good. Uh, we had people in the Liberal group and the Green group and all sorts. Lots of Polish MEPs who were all prepared to do it. Um, they obviously caught wind of it and decided decided that with the great people like Giscard in the room, uh, they wouldn't want the whole thing to fall into absolute chaos and disrepute, and therefore they stopped it. Why should we care about this man and his colleagues? Well, at the last European elections, 2.4 million of us voted for them, more than 16% of the national poll. Nigel's proud of the fact that they won 12 seats in this place. He's less proud of the fact that they lost three of those MEPs. Two because of financial irregularities and one because of a defection. But this June, new European elections are going to put pressure on Nigel and his party. So what are their prospects? If we won less than 10 seats, that would be a failure. And there's absolutely Will no... you win 10? Well, I hope we're going to win a lot more than that. I think our potential is to win a lot more than that. Our potential is to win more seats than we won last but time. That's not in the tea leaves, is it? Because you, you, uh, were on a high, you were on a high <coughs> four, four years ago. Listen, listen, I am not pretending this is going to be easy. We need to raise the money. We need a bit of luck, because you always do in life. But our potential, given now that two-thirds of the electorate support the position that only UKIP is standing for, our potential is enormous. It's up to us to prove whether we're good enough. The BMP coming along to UKIP and saying, come on, we can work together, let's be friends. What plan We've got so much in common. Well, we haven't. But that's what they said to you and that's what <coughs> they think and that's done you an enormous amount of damage too. The fact that the BNP think that you could work together well, has damaged you, hasn't it? Be well, fair. No, I don't think it has. I don't think it has. I don't know what, you know, thought process Nick Griffin was going through. I really don't. We have nothing in common with them at all. We utterly reject their racist agenda and there is no prospect today, tomorrow or at any point in the future of us having a deal or accommodation with them in any way whatsoever. Nigel Farage was born in 1964 and brought up in South London. He went to public school at Dulwich College. Then he left to work in business and turned from Tory to UKIP. 
he and his gang revel in being almost anti-politicians. When Michael Howard called them cranks and gadflies, they immediately founded the Gadfly Club. They celebrate with some very good dinners in Strasbourg. They even enjoy smoking in places where they shouldn't. You are the only person I know now who smokes. Mm. Well, I had to give it up for 11 months. Do you like being the bad boy who well, people boo at and well, hiss at, like the pantomime baddie? Well, and all, and, and all, everyone in the socialist group are going, he's behind you, yeah, well, as in, you're speaking. In the European Parliament, yes. Why are you here, though? Why do this? I don't understand. Because somebody, somebody, it was my feeling in the early days, has got to go out there and fight for Britain to be an independent, self-governing, democratic nation. And if the Conservative Party, which was my party in former times, isn't prepared to do that, and the Labour and the Lib Dems aren't, then someone's got to go and do it. So you're Robin Hood? Well... <laughs> I was wondering if the Euro gravy train had made him go a bit native. You love all the money, don't you? You love being able to come here... The money? Don't talk you know. to me about money. Well, you are, you're on a good whack, aren't you? Good whack? Yeah. Good whack? I was yeah. earning more when I was 21. Okay. And that's without inflation, so don't, I mean, please, with the average please, wage, with please, the average wage well, please don't talk to me about money, you know, look, I mean, I haven't got any money, I, look, I mean, I, no, no, I'm being serious about it. Say this. that to someone I having have, on £15,000 a year. I have made a massive financial sacrifice to do this job. In Humphrey Bogart's film, Casablanca, the French resistance sang the Marseillaise in Rick's Café and put German noses seriously out of joint. Nigel Farage loved the idea of standing up in the Strasbourg Parliament and doing the same thing. It's typical of the kind of victory he wants to score over his opponents. But it leaves pro-EU politicians from all over the European continent asking, of all the parliaments in all the world, why did he have to walk into ours? To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.